Are you dealing with a boss or a coworker who is crossing the line and isn't respecting you? Well, stick around because in this video, I'm gonna share with you how to establish healthy boundaries at work. Hey everybody, it's Brian from A Life After Layoff, and today I want to talk about boundaries at work. If you're dealing with a boss or a coworker who doesn't respect your boundaries, it can make your work life pretty miserable. In fact, it's one of the major reasons why people quit their jobs to begin with. So in this video, I'm gonna share with you some tips that you can use to establish healthy work boundaries. But before we get too far into it, if you're interested in more videos just like this one directly from a corporate recruiter, an HR professional, and a career coach, make sure you hit that subscribe button and you might also wanna hit that notification bell so you don't miss any future posts. All right, so how do we establish good boundaries at work? When you start a new job, a new company, or even a new boss, it's critical to establish those work boundaries as early as possible. And you wanna be consistent, firm, and professional with them. Because once you establish healthy boundaries early, people will know what they can expect from you. And once you've shown that it's acceptable to have have your boundaries violated, it's gonna be much harder to walk that back later on. Not to mention establishing healthy work boundaries will reduce the chances of a workplace bully being able to push your buttons. And it's also gonna be a good indicator that if your boss is not respecting those boundaries, that maybe you're not in the right fit after all. So if your employer box at you establishing healthy work boundaries, it's gonna give you a good indicator of the type of culture that you're working in and you might have to make a decision. The second thing you should be doing is being very careful not to overextend yourself. Especially when you start into a new job, you have to know what you can realistically handle and when too much work is gonna impact your ability to meet the core functions of your job. And I know most people wanna be people pleasers, so when somebody comes and asks you to help out in something, it's easy to just keep on saying yes and before you know it, you have an overwhelming amount of work to do and something is going to suffer. So be careful not to overcommit, especially early in your tenure and adding too much to your plate over the long haul is just gonna burn you out and that's gonna have a negative impact on your career. Which leads us to the next tip, which is to learn how to manage your calendar effectively. Most jobs have busy work that needs to get done, but you also need to carve out times to do the things that are truly gonna help you propel your career forward. If you're not managing a calendar or haven't gotten used to organizing yourself in an effective way, it can quickly snowball on you. So what I specifically try to do is block off certain times of my calendar that are non-negotiable. For example, as a recruiter, part of my job is to source candidates. So each day I block off time where all I do is source candidates. I don't accept non-essential phone calls or answer emails during those periods of time because I know if I don't have time to source, I'm not gonna have candidates in a pipeline and my metrics are gonna suffer. And it's also a wise idea to share your calendar with your broader team so that you don't overextend yourself with too many meetings. The next major suggestion would be to delegate whenever possible, and you don't have to be a boss to delegate work, especially when you're working cross-functionally with another team who is trying to give you extra work, especially at the last minute. So let's just say, for example, you're working on a major project that has a deadline, and somebody outside of your department comes to you with an additional request. For example, if a colleague in another department asks you for something that is considerable and outside of your normal scope of work, you can offer to help with the critical components of that request but push back on the non-essential work that's associated with it. For example, you could say something like this. I'm happy to provide the data that you're requesting for your presentation on Monday if you can put together the slides. And that way you're not saying no to the work and you're offering to take on the most critical components of that job, but you're establishing that you're not able to take on non-mission critical work outside of your normal scope. And another boundary that can be very uncomfortable is actually learning how to say no. Listen, it's okay to say no to a request when you simply can't take on the extra work or your boundaries are not being respected. In other words, if a colleague is asking you for something at the last minute and expecting you to drop everything that you're working on and it's gonna be at the detriment of your own job, you can absolutely push back and say, no, you can't handle that request at the moment. Now, I would suggest that you try to find an alternative solution to still help them, but simply saying yes to everything is just gonna lead you to burnout and you're eventually gonna get frustrated and leave. And if you find yourself saying no repeatedly, or your boss is the one that is asking you for all these outside of work scope requests, then you could ask them to reprioritize your workload. So when a colleague comes to you and tries to dump a bunch of work on you at the last minute, which requires you to completely shift around your schedule, you can push back and say something like this. I'm happy to help if I'm able to. Let me sync with my boss first on work prioritization, and then we'll let you know how we can assist you with this request. Now, if it's your boss that's the culprit, a similar type of tactic can work, but it's gonna be slightly different. What you should do is give them a summary of all the things that you need 
to accomplish in that given period of time, and then ask them to help reprioritize your workload to accommodate the latest request. As you're aware, I'm working on X, Y, and Z that needs to be accomplished by the end of the day. Can you take a look at my workload and tell me which one of these I can de-emphasize to accommodate your request? In a lot of cases, the boss will actually realize that their request isn't all that important and they don't want you to reprioritize after all. The next major way that you should establish your boundaries is to make sure that you don't skip breaks. Now, a lot of us who work in remote or office type jobs can find it difficult to step away for a regularly scheduled break. The purpose of breaks is to help give you time to recover from work-related stress. It's also gonna help with your creativity, your focus, and your energy. So if you're somebody that doesn't normally step away from your work, try to factor in a few breaks throughout the day every couple of hours so that you recharge and give your eyes a break, especially if you're somebody that looks at a computer all day. And don't skip your lunch, even if it's a chance for you to step away from the computer, go for a walk and get out in nature. It'll do wonders for you and it can help keep you from burning out. Not keeping in the theme of working time, you should also establish a definitive start and end to your work day because it can be very easy to let your work consume you and lose track of time. Now, it's not to say that you won't have to work an occasionally long hour because that happens in business or that you might need to send an email off outside of normal work hours. But if you establish the core hours that you're gonna work and try to stick to it, it's gonna help with boundary setting amongst your coworkers and your colleagues. Because listen, this is an important boundary and I think that this is one worth sticking to. And if you're somebody that's worried about missing a critical email or a call, pick a time, maybe 10 minutes before you go to bed to check any mission critical emails or phone calls that came in. But otherwise, step away from your work, spend time with your family and recharge. Same goes for your vacation time and any other paid time off. I've already talked about the importance of using your time off and not banking all of your vacation. But when you are on vacation, it is truly time to unplug and put your computer away. And if you're somebody that's worried about the stack of work that's gonna be waiting for you when you get back, establish a backup plan in case of emergencies and rely on the person who is gonna be watching your desk while you're gone to handle those things. And then you need to trust that the work is gonna get done and fully unplug. The next major tip has become more important as we move into more of a digital meeting space through a virtual workplace. This need to have a camera on constantly can cause a lot of stress. So establishing that your camera is only gonna be on for certain mission critical meetings is an absolutely reasonable boundary to set. Because listen, many people work from their home offices, but not everybody has a home office and they sometimes sit in their bedrooms. And it's not a coworker's right to see into your most private of spaces. And if they're insistent that you come on camera, it's certainly reasonable that you can set a virtual background. But I would recommend trying to establish an early cadence of your expectation and your boundary there. If you've tried to establish all these boundaries and your workplace is still pushing back on you, then you have to really start to think about making a tough decision. Some cases, if you can't move the needle, you might actually have to think about quitting that employer and moving to an organization that is going to respect your boundaries because you shouldn't feel bashful about setting healthy and reasonable boundaries. So if you're somebody that's stressing out in your workplace, try some of these suggestions and see how they help. I'm curious, what boundaries do you have that you like to establish? Leave a comment below. But if you're somebody that is worried about making a move away from a toxic workplace, it's actually something that I specialize in. I've got a website called alifeafterlayoff.com that's loaded with tips and tricks on how to improve your situation at work. I also have some of my deepest and most intimate knowledge in the form of some training courses. The first one is called Resume Rocket Fuel and it's designed to teach you exactly how to write a resume that's gonna get a recruiter to notice you and pick up that phone for a first round interview. Once you get that first round interview, it's up to you to sell yourself throughout the rest of the interviewing process and that's where the ultimate job seeker boot camp comes in. It's basically interview training on how to ace each round of those interviews and ultimately to land that dream offer. And if you're somebody that wants to bypass the recruiter altogether and skip right to the front of the line, check out my training called Unlocking LinkedIn. And it's gonna teach you how to get recruiters to actually start to come to you to access the hidden job market for some of the best quality jobs out there. If you think you need more personalized help, I do offer some limited private one-on-one -on -one coaching as well. And you can reach me through my website for that. Hey, I appreciate you watching. Happy establishing of healthy boundaries, and we will see you on the next one.